Mixed Media Gaming. Welcome back to Mixed Media Podcast. We just finished the uh, new segment. Um, you can watch the recording of that if you missed it. Ben is not here today, so it's just uh, me and Irving, and I'll be doing my segment first. Um, we're talking about Tomb Raider, and the reason being, well, I guess there's two reasons. Uh, firstly, I was just thinking about the game, right? I was like, that's a pretty good game. <laughs> uh, that's how I review it. Well, actually, three reasons. Se- uh, secondly, I got, I was going to play the second one in the, I'm talking about the Tomb Raider 2013 trilogy. I was going to play the second one, uh, but I didn't have the time. <laughs> so uh, there's that. And thirdly, uh, it's coming up on its 20, uh, 20th anniversary, the whole series as a whole, which is a very old series. One of the, uh, you know, like earliest recognizable story driven game series is pretty much so yeah i'll begin with some background so again talk about tomb raider the 2013 one not like the 2000 one <laughs> uh it's the 10th installment so yeah long series created by uh, crystal dynamics and published by square enix um it's a reboot of the original series and it's sort of like i you know i haven't played the original series but as i understand it's like Similar, sort of, and it sort of reconstructs uh, the main character, Lara Croft's uh, origins. It's not, you know, the exact same story, but uh, and much of the concept is the same, right? I was afraid it'd be a fairly dated game, but uh, surprisingly, it didn't feel like that at all. It felt like, in some ways, ahead of the curve. <laughs> uh, wow. In some ways, yeah, I can see it's a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit old. Um, so, you know, firstly, when you first start into the game, uh, after you know you click play or whatever, you get into this like really nice looking cutscene, and it's like it's it's you know it, it clearly is not being rendered real time. Right? I'll say that much. Not that you couldn't do that. It's just the, uh, like probably the tech the tech wasn't there at the time, right? You can probably do that with modern methods. It's not like you know crazy crazy good, but it's definitely like you know top tier even for now um, when compared to real time now. It'd be it'd be you know looks really good, right? And it sort of draws you into the to the whole thing, right? Uh, you, you want to look at it essentially. <laughs> it looks really nice. And then you get to this sort of so you know as a background. Uh, I don't want to spoil any of the story, but all I'll say is uh, some beginner stuff, pretty much, um, which is I don't want to consider spoil like a spoiler at all. So you play as Lara Croft, who is a uh, sort of an explorer of some sort, um, and you are shipwrecked on an island that you you, know, you don't know what this island is, um, but you're there you get sort of kidnapped question mark unclear at the start <laughs> uh and you uh, are temporarily unconscious and you wake up in a little cave area that is the first real-time rendered place and it looks also amazing so i think part of this i think there's, there's a few reasons why it looks so good partially is because the job the team just did a good job right um uh, <laughs> uh they used their uh crystal dynamics used an in-house engine called foundation it's as far as I'm aware, has only been used on this Tomb Raider series so far, and it's planned to be used for other games. It's very strange, considering I believe the last Tomb Raider in the trilogy was in 2018, so it's been like four years and the engine has not been used again. It's been used for three or four games, I think. I think it might have been used for uh, Tomb Raider outside of this trilogy. But yeah, yeah it looks great. Um, I think it's partially due to the low lighting setting right now as well. Uh, I learned from 3D modeling that low lighting lets you hide a lot of uh garbage pretty much and you start in a cave <laughs> and there's like a few areas of like natural lighting poking through some rocks and stuff like that um but for the most part this is like candles and using a, a torch to like look around and stuff like that so for those parts very dark and doesn't let you see really closely into the textures and stuff like that uh <laughs> so i think that's part of the reason why and yeah once you leave the cave which happens very early on you sort of it, it starts to show us age but like not that much. So there's some things like, okay, like when Larry gets out of the cave, she sort of falls a little bit and it like highlights the fact that the grass isn't the greatest looking thing in the world. Well, uh, so I feel like they shouldn't have done that. But I think possibly because at the time the grass didn't look that bad anyway. So it didn't, they probably didn't think anything of it. But now it is like, all right, <laughs> that wasn't a good idea. Um, yeah. It's also like the uh, like, like uh, Larry's like pants pockets are clearly just like, plastered onto the texture of her pants right there's, like there's, they're not uh raised in any way and you know normally in games you would not actually well it depends on the game right but oftentimes you don't actually uh in your 3d model create extra geometry like that that like you know like pockets you don't usually 
raise them at all or have any texturing there because that uh, will decrease the performance a lot. But what you do instead is use what's called like a normal map. A normal map essentially sort of fakes 3D in a way. It allows you to provide a flat texture and allows your graphics card to render it in an easy way that doesn't it doesn't isn't truly isn't isn't as good as it could be if you actually you know 3D modeled that pocket on correctly or whatever. But for small things like that, you might not actually notice that it's that it's uh, that it's not until you look closely. Usually, if you look at things with normal maps closely, you'll see oh yeah that's that's that, <laughs> that's not 3D. But for something like a pocket or or you know in a third person game, you probably won't ever notice. Yeah, no, it's clearly just there was no normal map, just just a just a flat texture. Another weird sort of artifacting I noticed was that some of like the metallic glossy effects were like really shimmery, um, like flickering almost sometimes, um, which is odd. But one thing that I noticed that is, you know, it feels like a regression in current times is that none of the textures were stretched in the environments. And I don't know why this is such a big issue, but it's not like usually it's open world games, I think specifically, where there might be a cliff or something like that. Yeah. And the texture is stretched because they just applied the texture to the entire landmass entirely, and they didn't they didn't deal with the fact that you might I, I actually you know coming from a three D modeling background I can't figure it out quite it's something with the UV mapping that's wrong is what I figure right I feel like the game engine should be able to handle the fact that you apply texture to the thing it it sort of I guess I, I can say that'd be complicated actually okay fair enough but. Yeah, that that's often an issue where like you have stretched textures on steep declines and stuff like that in games, and there was just none. It felt like I think part of the reason is because the game's not open world like any every other modern game currently. So it's like you can actually pay attention to every single detail in the world. In open world, you can't really do that. You can't look at every you know, blade of grass and be like, oh, this this correct. But a lot easier in a game like Tomb Raider, where uh, it's uh, it's a game on rails essentially. Um, that does a decent job of making you feel like it's open world sometimes, or it's like. I can go anywhere, sort of. Not really, but... <laughs> How did they achieve that? So, in certain areas, it feels like you can't go anywhere because there's clearly a reason. You know, some games, like, I don't know, there's like a, there's like some, like, like a tree that's fallen down or something like that, right? It's like, oh, you can't pass the tree, even though you can clearly just jump over the tree, <laughs> you know? Uh, stuff like that. Well, as I said, a lot of times you're underground or in a building, and it makes sense you can't leave the building, right? As for when you're outside, you're you, I I think it they create enough space, and they fill it with trees and stuff like that, so you can't see that far. So it feels like there's probably a you know a good ways behind the trees, but if you go there, I'm sure it'll be like a rock wall or something, right? It's like something I don't want to do because just trees. So it doesn't 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 feel like I'm confined actually, you know, uh, and that's a. Uh, that's, that's, I guess that's a good feeling, a desired feeling, um, usually. And uh, yeah, I feel like there's like a high variety of areas too. As I said before, you know, caves, indoor areas, outdoor areas, stuff like that. And things missing from the, the, like, you know, I'm looking at like Ubisoft games where everywhere feels like it's the same place, but just copy and paste it. Uh, I think that's partially because of this open world thing. It's like you know, playing Ghost Recon, and then you have I couldn't I couldn't name a name a place in Ghost Recon at all. The only place I can name is Erewhon because it's literally a like a town built into a mountain. <laughs> like that is is one of is, is the and it's like the like the the social hub, if you will, of the game, right? It is it's like yeah. literally it's you know clearly special, right? Where every every other like town is like just a blur. They all feel the same. Some of them are factories. There's like it's like it's like three kinds, right? It's like factory, mansion small town there's no in between <laughs> um there's nothing there's no other there's nothing else pretty much um they're all like around the same size and stuff like that and they all look the same they're all the same so apparently everyone living in this area has the same exact like furnishing style and stuff like that this feels like yeah you know, probably because they just had more ability to do this because it was a smaller game in general um in terms of you know the area that it covers you didn't have to do that kind of thing where they just copy paste over and over and over again I think, I think GTA does that a lot better. So does Watch Dogs. So I guess not all Ubisoft games where uh, I guess those are, it's interesting because those are like cities and they just have different sections of city um, that are distinctly different. I think that sells it sort of enough. But yeah, it sells a variety. So I actually can't, I'm not even sure why it's like that in Ghost Recon. <laughs> I think it's partially because 
Actually, I, I, no, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why it's like that in Ghost Recon. And uh, <clears throat> the hair physics, that is not a thing in a lot of games. A lot of games have stiff hair, and it causes them to create character designs that have short hair. That's why, I, like, you know, half the characters in existence in, in uh, video games have short hair. I don't know how they dealt with it in the original Tomb Raider, where I'm certain they did not have hair physics. But in this, they uh, have hair physics. It's, like, better than nothing, but certainly not the greatest thing I've seen ever, because the hair sort of floats over Lara. Some, like, like, it doesn't, doesn't touch her skin, clearly. It's like very noticeable that it like floats above her shoulders and stuff like that. I, you know, there there are like in uh, in game engines and just um, not necessarily game engines, but anything that simulates collisions in general. A lot of times you have uh, like a sort of a buffer space where you detect collisions a little bit uh, uh, a little bit far away from where the actual visual collider is um, for uh, certain reasons. But it felt like it was that, but it was really far. I just don't know why they didn't just. Make it smaller. I'm sure it wasn't that simple, but uh, yeah, it definitely looked. It broke. It broke the illusion of like, oh, proper hair physics finally, not quite. Oh, and the fact that it's really old, and you know, looks nice visually is really nice because nowadays it's a lot easier to run on ultra settings. They ran on ultra, no problem. I think it has a 144 FPS the entire time. It wasn't a big problem at all <laughs> uh, because they made it for. Uh, this came out when the Xbox 360 and PS3 were a thing, so. I had to run on those, not at ultra, but I had to run on those at low to medium, whatever it was. Um, so, uh, yeah, nowadays you can run on, <laughs> on a phone, probably, you know, <laughs> on modern phones. Um, but yeah, aside from visuals, the animations were clearly motion captured. Uh, I think, you know, walking looked, you know, given it's a third person game, it's very important that the character looks natural and walking looks very natural, which is very important because it's the most common action in the entire game. Not just walking, you know, pretty much anything Lara does is motion captured for the most part. There are certain things that are not motion captured, and it really shows. It's like, I guess they didn't hire many animators, who, or their, uh, their threshold for good animation just died if it wasn't motion captured. <laughs> There's certain things like uh, there's a part towards the beginning where uh, Lara's like falling down, like, like, like a tumbling down a slope, and it looks like almost comical. Like, I was like, okay. I see they didn't have the actor tumble down a slope. Fair enough. Okay, I can get, I can get why you didn't do that, but it's like it looks really bad uh, with the uh, manual animation stuff. But um, it's fairly. It's you know you know it's like it's like Attack on Titan when you see 3D animation. Right? It's like <laughs> that is bad. Yeah, it's insulting <laughs> to your face. It just sticks out so poorly relative to the rest of the stuff. But at least it's like usually infrequent. <laughs> Uh, actually, I'd say it's worse than Attack on Titan because sometimes when it's there, it's there for a long time. Usually, you know, it's not like it's just there and it's gone. Uh, whereas yeah. with this, like the animation lasts five seconds and it's gone. No, no <laughs> you just you just forget about <laughs> it. But uh, not Attack on Titan, it, is, it persists for for decent times. Yeah, so the most part, the animation was uh, really good. One of the odd parts of the, the animation is like uh, towards the beginning, um, Lara has like sort of a wound from. Uh, I don't want to spoil it. But surviving harsh con- harsh conditions, I'll say. I guess um, she sort of she has like a cut right on her like uh, hip, so she's like holding her hip, and you know this makes sense, I guess. What you know, fine. But there are points where she just stops doing that randomly, like within the early part of the game, she just removes her hand. And it's like, why? <laughs> what happened? And is, uh, is like, it healed uh, or something? No, I'll explain why I can't. Well, it could be that, but. I'll explain what it really is. It happens when you're, for example, uh, climbing, for example. Well, I guess you need both hands to climb, which is fair enough, right? If you're in a survival situation, you have to climb something. You're going to climb it. You know, it's painful. But she shows no, like, ounce of, like, you know, like, it's just everything's fine, you know? <laughs> no ounce of, like, pain, which is odd considering a game where she's very emotive like that, you know? And uh, we're just walking. You can clearly tell. But then climbing, it's like, I, you know, I'm fairly certain it's the same climbing animation that plays post wound when she's like fully healed and stuff like that and same with jumping it's like immediately remove her arm and it's like i don't know it, it feels very very odd to me <laughs> i think uh ghost recon uh it's odd that i brought it up twice um given that it's not that relevant a game anymore but uh they did, they did a, a similar sort of thing where in the beginning of the game uh your main character is wounded and it's also their first and so you see all the animations i feel like they did it better where all the animations for doing anything felt labored. 
And you know, not not just not just during the beginning, you can get to the injured, injured state later in the game. Uh, and your animations, it's part of like the injured state, right? Is your animations are slower and stuff like that, and they look like they're slower. And I think the animations of the game are also really good. Um, so yeah, they uh, they uh, took it a step up, I guess. Um, another time that's even weirder when she moves her hand is during cutscenes, which it's like. It's not. It won't even be an action that requires two hands. It's just she just moves her hand. She <laughs> drops. Like at the start of the cutscene, her hand will be there, and then immediately she'll drop it. And I'm like, I don't really know what happened here. Yeah. Um, I wonder if if the idea that she'd be holding her wound came too late, and so all the uh, animations were sort of baked in already, and so uh. they just had it transition away from that later. Uh, that's my guess, especially because it's motion captured and it's not just as easy. Well, you know. You don't want to go back in there and manually try to fix it yourself, uh, or or yeah. to bring the actors back to to do that to react. I mean, essentially, all the cutscenes in the game. Well, not sorry, all the cutscenes in the first like ten percent um, where she's uh, wounded. It goes away when she goes to a campfire, sleeps, and then she's just fine the next day. I mean, the wound was pretty big, so I feel like that would not be the case really. But I can I can accept it. I think uh, in the universe, what I wish I just did is they just she just made a makeshift bandage and then. Bandaged it up and went on with her, went on with her day, like immediately. You know, like I wouldn't have to like think about this. Yeah, <laughs> and the fact it was really weird. There's also this sort of dynamic animation within the game that's really good, and it sort of shows that Lara is like a really, you know, more. Or I think a lot of games make their characters feel like they're just not real people at all, and Lara feels yeah. like a real person in part in part because of her situational awareness always, or like environmental awareness, pretty much. Where like She'll look at objects of interest, and that that thing like that was a very simple thing that like blew my mind. Cause like, I don't more things do this. It's like yeah. she's just looking at something. Like you're just walking, and she just looks at something that like you might not even notice yourself. But like, yeah, you know, and it might not be important to the story. Usually, it's not important to the story. I think it can be used to effect to great effect if it's important to the story. It's sort of like a uh, yeah, maybe Laura turns around, looks behind her, and you don't know what's behind her, but you can see her face, his expression, as you know. As she looks behind her at whatever it is, it could be like a you know a face of joy or fear, both of both of which would uh, trigger a decent response from the from the player, right? But um, for the most part, it's just like random things. Like she'd be walking through the cave, and there'd be something scrawled on the on the wall. And she'd just look at it, and it's like it's not really that like important, but like it feels makes her feel so much more human than like a uh, you know um, in other games where your character just like. Just they just they just look where like random directions that don't make sense you know they, they look in the direction they're moving which is not often does not always make sense I should say you have a neck for a reason you know you can move it around look around stuff like that you don't you're not always fixed to looking forwards um, yeah so uh, yeah and she'll even um, do things like bring her torch up to certain places um, to see them you know once again things that are not necessarily important but just things like if you're walking through the cave you're likely to look at the painting that's on the cave wall so you put your torch up and it just you know whatever that like sort of blew my mind is like such a simple thing that works amazingly um yeah it looks great too even though obviously you can't motion capture that because there are so many angles in which she was, she was looking at it's probably like a, i would assume inverse kinematics where like uh i'm not gonna explain the technical stuff about it but it allows you to uh, have sort of uh uh dynamically generated animations i guess um for stuff like that as for, I guess, finally getting onto the gameplay, uh, this is oddly enough where I have the least to say, probably, partially because it's been a long time since I played the game. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I guess I can tell you something about how it was like. Is that it wasn't very revolutionary, I guess. You know, it was very uh, standard. So, you know, when you first, it was like a, when you first have the game, it's like a, walks you through it um, in like a very normal, like Mario-esque type of way where it presents you a challenge. And you solve the challenge like a little, you know, it tells you how, right? On the side of the screen, it'd be like, oh, there's a little blurb. You can read nothing too long. And it has a video that goes with it too, I'm pretty sure, always. So you can just watch it, you know, you don't have to think about it. And it has at the bottom, like, just the button you need to press for this to, like, the, the key button. It has, like, large. So you don't have to read the blurb. But you just, I mean, it's nice because it allows you to go at your own pace, right? If you've never played a game before, really, right? And maybe you should read the whole thing. But if you're, like, 
you see a wall and you know your game senses are triggered you know <laughs> triggered like i gotta climb yeah. over right you just need to know what button it is you don't need to like <laughs> read a blurb about it right the button's just, just large right and you, uh under the text you need to do it they they uh there's a thing called um what's it called uh there's a name for it i can't remember it's like something instinct uh i think where uh, i think like like dead space is a similar thing ish kind of where it shows you objects of interest that space will show you where to go i guess um yeah there are other games that are like this too i just like definitely i just can't i just there's not coming to mind right now but uh it shows you like uh you know temporarily while you're standing still in this game uh you press a button and uh, this instinct thing happens and it shows you objects of interest things you can interact with walls you can climb stuff like that uh, it's very useful <clears throat> and a very like not gamey way to make it uh happen because you know, I think what was designed in this game clearly was a very minimal HUD, and uh, it is very minimal. And you know, keeping that thing off your screen, uh, you know, where you need to go, you know, highlighted important objects, just not on your screen when you don't want them, pretty much. And it sort of encourages you to, encourages you to explore yourself, I think, uh, in some sense. And there is actually a decent bit to explore, which I guess sort of contributes to the open world experience, and that there are sort of like side side quests, if you want to call them that, side missions, whatever where, uh, well, the game is called Tomb Raider, and so you can raid tombs, essentially, on your way to doing whatever. I found the game pretty easy. Like, okay, I definitely failed at certain certain spots. Um, I think this was a good thing. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't overly challenging. I think this is more desired in story games where you're really into the story, and there's also this, like, weird, like, little narrative dissonance that happens when your character fails at something, and you restart, and it feels weird because it's like, Okay, what happened in the story? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, or or um or uh like yeah, like Lara, Lara can fail in like gruesome ways, like falling down a pit, for example, right? And like they'll make it gruesome, which is weird, right? And then she just comes back. It just like responds like, "What's the point of that?" I, I, I don't know what the the point of uh, showing her doom was when like she just appears a moment later. Or uh, this is specifically a more of an issue in like. Um, tense, there's, you know, gunfighting and stuff like that, intense firefights, and, you know, tension is increased, and then you lose, and then you respawn, and the tension's all gone immediately, as you uh, are just, like, I don't know, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a weird it's a weird feeling. Um, and you just I mean, go back into it again, and it doesn't, it doesn't uh, feel right. I know there's some games... What is that? I was going to say there's a problem in many games, right? I mean, yeah. uh, Last of Us, which is still the best game I've ever played, it's still, like, the, the deaths of the characters are very gruesome <laughs> if you if you if you uh fail uh you'll die in various gruesome ways and i think what it's supposed to achieve in last of us at least is the horror of like your favorite character dying you know <laughs> like but then like you're just there again it's kind of odd. yeah <laughs> it's like that in uh dead space but i think that is just for the horror factor i think that makes a lot of a lot more sense in dead space i think um i think it still probably feels weird that you just fine after being like disemboweled right <laughs> just yeah. okay but i think it's more excusable than like here where it's like this is not a horror game it's like i don't know it's a it, i don't know i feel like just normal failure would be enough but whatever but yeah um so there's like sort of two main gameplay loops there's puzzling and there's gunfighting pretty much right the puzzles i did i did really enjoy those are usually oftentimes the things you'll find in the sort of uh, side tomb stuff um you just gotta get from point a to point b essentially I had to figure out how, how some of them were fairly challenging, actually. A couple of them, I was like, I don't get it. <laughs> um, and it took me a while to figure it out, which was uh, pretty interesting. One time it glitched. I remember you were there, actually, when it glitched. And I think there was a, there was a cage or something like that. And I don't remember. You can, I think you can race and lower the cage. I think it got into a, into a position it should not have been able to be in. But oh, I yes, I remember that. The game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had to restart the game entirely. Um and for the longest time, I was like, maybe I'm just not getting the puzzle. <laughs> I was like, oh, how did I figure this out? I was like, that wasn't part of the puzzle. Like, I actually broke it somehow. I think, uh, I can't remember what it was, but yeah, it was a cage on a rope, and you should be able to move the cage around, and for some reason, uh, it could not get into a position that it was supposed to be in or something like that. Um, never had that issue again, though. But it gave me, like, a big sense of doubt in, like, every puzzle. After that, I was like, okay, this is glitched or, like... <laughs> <laughs> or uh, <laughs> am I just unable to figure it out? Yeah, that. but for those part puzzles weren't weren't uh, weren't too bad. So uh, yeah, so uh, you know, gameplay good. I, I give it I give it like a you know it's just average. It's okay. Yeah, it's certainly nothing crazy good. 
you know, maybe I'll say, uh, I'll say average. Uh, there are too many good games <laughs> to say, <laughs> say above average, I feel like. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, a- average too slightly above average, I feel like. In terms of the story, uh, it's also weird. I mentioned Dead Space twice. Like, you did a Ghost Recon. It's like, it's not weird to mention the game once, but it's like, what are the odds that I'll mention it twice? I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> uh, uh, it's, it's sort of, it's sort of giving like Dead Space vibes in terms of, in terms of the story and that like, you are the least lucky person alive for some reason. <laughs> And I think I think it manifests itself differently in uh, in Dead Space versus Tomb Raider. Or in Tomb Raider, it's like you're unlucky in things that don't don't really matter to the story. It's like, for example, there's a point uh, where you're climbing is a plane that crashes and you're climbing on top of it, right? And you get off of it and you sort of shake the plane. The plane almost hits you as it, like falls over and almost hits you, right? Because the plane is in the, it's hard to explain. It's in a precarious position, I guess, to start with. That doesn't, I mean, it's a cutscene, your character just jumps away from it, and nothing really happens, right? I guess you could say add to the tension for a moment, whatever, right? Uh, in the grand scheme of things, it didn't really matter that much. In Dead Space, it's like story elements that do matter. It's like, I'm thinking about Dead Space 3, because I played that recently. And it's like, there's like a point where you're in a spaceship, and it just, like, falls apart, essentially. And you lose a couple characters in, in that scene, essentially, right? Well, I didn't get to the point where I figured out if they're alive or not, so I actually don't know. Well... One of them is definitely not alive, <laughs> but, but uh, other ones unclear. So that actually matters to the plot. I feel like Lara, Cro- uh, Lara Croft's like stuff. It's like it doesn't actually matter usually. It's just like I don't know. The game just likes like a, like a floor collapsing underneath it. It's just random. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know uh, stuff like that. Um, and uh, I mean, there's uh, the entire. The entire plot is essentially her getting unlucky over and over again. Yeah, even even the plot points actually. There's some things about her getting unlucky. I, I think it's not as unlucky as the Dead Space Man though. That is actually really bad <laughs> stuff that happens to him randomly. This is more like believable random stuff. But uh, the stuff that's not believable is like the just 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 randomly like it seems like the universe is is is, <laughs> is going at it pretty much all the time. So it runs you that sort of thing. And I, what I like about the story is that it feels like it has high control over her. Um, I have control over itself, pretty much, which I think is something that's lacking in a lot of open world games where the order of the story is not guaranteed, which is such mm. an odd thing to think about. Because I don't know, you, you can't do that with many stories. You can't just take Star Wars and put the big, put like the end and put it at the middle, right? That, that ruins the whole movie, essentially. Uh, if you, if you say flip to the second, third movie of the original film, that wouldn't even make sense, right? So you have to make a story that makes sense. Which means it will never, pretty much, ne- like you know, usually open world games have, are sort of in like a, a tree branch sort of thing where you start at one point and then maybe the branch will split into say three paths. You can go into three different directions, and then those branches will split into more directions. You know, and as you go further, there are you know, and all these branches will at some point converge for sure at some point. Um, but you have a really large amount of states you can be in, as opposed to an on rails game like Tomb Raider, where essentially there's one state. There's always one state you can be in at any given position of the story. There's only one route down the story. Uh, minus minus side quests, which as far as I'm aware, don't change the story at all, so it's fine. <clears throat> so for, you know, open world stuff, yeah, I mean, you're giving them the tough job of having to, to create a story that is supposed to be interesting no matter what state you're in of a story. And that definitely, I'm sure, takes a toll of the story. I think there's something good about you know constraints in art and stuff like that but like i feel like that's a bad constraint <laughs> i don't have to deal with that um <clears throat> the sort of flips everything that's you know considered good uh in a story on its head you know i think it can be used it can, it can be good in some, in some cases right especially when the story is not being emphasized um particularly uh, or like in gta the story is yeah, it's sort of branches, but the branches are very, like, they're very small and clearly, like, because uh, it's the way the branches were, oh, sorry, sorry, this, instead of, uh, GTA is, I guess, uh, one of the weird ones where, yeah, you start in one, one sort of root branch, you spread out, spread out into three, and you never, you never sort of converge until the end, pretty much, and they're, like, because you can play as three different characters, and uh they all go you know they all go forwards only they they don't have they don't have multiple options of what they do they just do one thing right it's, yeah. it's three on rails games essentially um you know with some caveats so for example 
certain characters cannot progress if a certain character is too far back in the story, essentially. This makes sense to me, because uh, you can get into like a undefined state where a character has done something that means that you know the other character can't do something that was originally uh, in the story, you know, something yeah. like that. So <laughs> I think this makes this is a good. I think it's a good approach for uh, doing something like that, like an open world game like that. Um, or you can have open world games where the story is on rails. It doesn't really matter. I, I guess. Uh, I you know I, I guess I see why you wouldn't do that because I guess part of the thing is like oh you can go anywhere. Does it really matter that much? I don't think this is a topic for a different time. I'm gonna stop rambling, but uh, <laughs> I don't think it actually matters that much. But whatever, I think it's more of a gimmick than anything for the most part. But yeah, that's that's, that's uh, mostly what I have to say about the story. It feels like it has like a storyteller, unlike a lot of games. You know, like 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 there's somebody who actually deliberately made the story and it wasn't just random, <laughs> pretty much, which is, uh, uh, you know, what a lot of other games feel like. Um, it, it felt more like a, like a movie, for example, right? Um, which is uh, something to be desired of a story, I think. And uh, yeah, um, originally my notes after this part, I want to talk about acting and stuff like that. but didn't have time to, to talk about it. I wanted to like, I re looked at a lot of footage from the game and stuff like that. Um, to, Cause I played it a while ago and to, to sort of, uh, Redraw my memory, but it, I wasn't able to get to points where there are a lot of characters on screen and stuff like that. And I'm also no like master in acting anyway, so I don't know how much I can say about that. So I'm just gonna skip that part for now. Uh, and then the beginning of the uh, in the game is pretty much just Lara for the most part, um, minus some stuff. So yeah. And speaking of like movies and stuff like that, I think the camera the camera work in the game is very interesting. So. Yeah, I remember yeah. looking over your shoulder and being like, this is very deliberate and cinematic, and it's very well done. Exactly. Uh-huh. So there are a few things that make this feel... Well, okay, I think the overall... It does two things, uh, the, the camera in in uh, Tomb Raider. One, it directs your attention at what you should be looking at sometimes, right? Which in a game like that's like part of the big challenge of crafting a story is that you don't know what your player is going to do, do at any time. That's why it's not a movie, right? And that's why you can't have like a score that goes you know you know to it perfectly stuff like that because you don't know. That's like the biggest the biggest challenge that you don't know what your player is going to be doing. But you know at certain points it just says hey your camera is looking at this now <laughs> pretty much. The second thing is like that it does is it makes you feel like you are not Lara Croft and that you are watching Lara Croft, Croft pretty much as if it's a movie, right? You are not the character you are watching the character. I think this is something that is to be desired. Usually, I think a lot of games want to make you feel like the character and feel like immersed, but I don't think you need to be the character to be immersed. You can be immersed in the world without being the character. But like a movie, once again. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can identify is, with yeah. a character without being the character, right? Like, you can uh, feel their emotions yourself, you know, without being them. <laughs> That's how yeah, exactly. Work. Yeah, I think a lot of games, what they'll do is they'll give you like those, like, you know, dialogue options and stuff like that to make you feel like, oh, you are the character. You're making, you're choosing one of three presets for the answers that don't actually make them big of, a, big of an effect, you know, exponentially increasing the cost of this game, by the way, <laughs> uh, to produce. When you don't need that, it's like, just don't, don't be the character. Uh, that's the solution. <laughs> you don't need to be the character. Lara is her own version. She just has her own stuff, pretty much. You know, you, there's not a single choice. Like, what she does is up to her, pretty much. You, know, you don't have a say. You know, is part of the on rails thing too. In an open world game, it's like you can have problems with like you know narrative dissonance where your character might say something and then you do another thing, like you go somewhere else, for example, right? And this, it, like, she'll just do what she says she'll do because you have no other option, pretty much. Um, yeah. Camera is also like physical, which is interesting. So like, when if you look up while it's raining, like there'll be raindrops on the you know, quote unquote camera, uh, stuff like that. It makes you feel like you feel like you're in a movie, right? But also adds to that is that, you know, the fact that once again, Lara looks at stuff independently, which sort of, sort of further emphasizes that she's not you. Yeah, I think that is a interesting thing to, to I might talk about that, the camera in that game. It's uh, certainly interesting that I like to actually like to like study properly and uh, understand because uh, it's really, really interesting. Um, but yeah. As for audio, that's something I do not remember much about in the game. So, I mean, make it that way you will. The composer of the music is Jason Graves. You may recognize him as the composer for Dead Space. I do not know how that game turned up a third time. That is like, it's like, <laughs> it's like, 
it's not that it's not a popular game, right? It's just odd that it came up three times. <laughs> yeah. A game that's not not related. Yeah. Uh, this I guess this time is the only time that really like 100 had to come up. I knew this was coming up. I just forgot about it actually. <laughs> when I listened to and I was watching a playthrough again, and the music started to turn in, I'm like, yeah, this sounds like Dead Space. <laughs> it sounds tense uh, a lot. It sounds sounds also empty at the same time, uh, which sounds very horror like i think which is interesting because it doesn't feel that uh, tomb raider doesn't feel like a horror game maybe it's like a you know you're tense sometimes but it doesn't feel like you get jump scared right <laughs> it's not that kind of game uh stuff like that but yeah uh so final thoughts i think it's a great example of what games can be it's you know it's how this game was made in 2013 and it, you know maybe i am one of those people who say games used to be better back in the olden days <laughs> yeah you boomer. A whole, a whole uh, i don't know 10 years ago almost at this point and uh, it it feels a lot better than than a lot of modern story games I've played. It does feel a lot like Dead Space, though, which is interesting because those games were made in the same era. Uh, Dead Space came a little bit before. I think for, uh, Dead Space the first was two thousand eight. The third one was two thousand and twelve, something like that. So one year before this came out. I wonder if that had a decent amount of influence. Well, at least the well. Clearly, the uh, creators knew of it, or, you know, were well, obviously knew of it, but were enjoyers of it, given that uh, Jason Graves is the composer, right? So yeah. at least I thought uh, they did good music work there. Yeah, you know, it's a uh, great example of relatively short games. The game is 1.5 hours long. That is, you play that in a few sittings, and it feels like a wholly complete game that doesn't need anything else. It doesn't feel too short, it doesn't feel too long. It feels like a movie where... The, the the time length is just you know it is deliberately designed to be this length it all needs to be it doesn't have to have infinite amount it doesn't have to have you know 30 hours of driving uh embedded in it <laughs> it's just 11.5 hours i you know there are probably like, i wonder uh how many hours of driving it is in the gta for example and how it compares to the 11.5 hours of this game it probably isn't 11.5 hours for the whole story but it's probably like some absurd percentage of this game essentially <laughs> yeah uh, that is uh, somewhat disturbing and i think it is clear why you know, I, you know i don't know how the original tomb raiders were of course um given that i have played them but if it was anything like this you know obviously with less technical ability essentially um i totally understand why it is such a uh, a a well-known um game yeah, yeah, I understand why it's well, such a well known game for this long and why it has, you know, so many, uh, <laughs> there are so many of them. Um, and yeah, it's pretty much a lot to say. I'll be playing the second one, Rise of the Tomb Raider, fairly soon. I have it. So I also have Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I think. Do I? I, th- I think I do. Yes. I th- yeah, I'm pretty sure I do. So <laughs> I'll also be doing that. Yeah, I I, uh, I got the Tomb Raiders too from uh, the Epic Games uh sales yeah that. that's what i thought i was like i feel like i got both of those at once that's what i was thinking i was like i don't know how though <laughs> yeah there's no co-op right in uh tomb raider no oh there is i'm pretty sure at least in the first tomb raider there is a there is a multiplayer um multiplayer but oh. obviously i don't think anyone <laughs> i don't think let me just confirm this right this is your multiplayer that's not what i'm pretty expecting sure you to say yeah, there's a multiplayer. I don't know what it entails, but I'm pretty sure no one plays this anymore. Because I think I tried to get into a game, and either you said the servers are down, or like you're just queuing forever. I don't remember what it was, but uh, yeah, it, just, it didn't. I never tried it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna assume it's very unremarkable. <laughs> Probably. Well, I don't know. Like the the, I was thinking it might be something like a The Last of Us multiplayer, which yeah, people didn't talk about too much. Which is also like Ghost Recon multiplayer, uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint specifically. Which I played that. I played the multiplayer for that, which was actually pretty good. I was just really bad at it. Pretty much. Um, was people that, actually I, liked I the uh, Last of Us uh, multiplayer if you actually played it. Like some people actually uh, enjoyed it, which is uh, mm. interesting. Because <clears throat> I was like, yeah, I remember just not knowing it existed for the longest time, and then I don't it really know, I doesn't need to exist. Like, oh. If they if they just made the game without it, no one would ask for it. You know, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Probably the same thing with Tomb Raider, yeah. Probably just like this feels uh, fine on its own. But yeah. wait a minute. Oh. Just found out. It seems that Shadow of the Tomb Raider has co op. As well as Rise of the Tomb Raider? Oh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Rise of the Tomb Raider has co op, it seems. Which I don't know how that works. Like, 
for the characters in Dead Space, I think they literally add a character. They just straight up this is a new character, in it. like, nice. as you can sort of tell in Dead Space Three, I, I played co-op, where you can tell like, I mean, there like certain cutscenes though, like, it feels like they just didn't make it with the second dude in mind, <laughs> and he's like, you, you just like it's like sometimes the camera the camera for the cutscene will be different right it'll be it'll look at me it'll look at you know whatever player you are right which makes sense all right uh, i guess um and sometimes it'll just look at the main clearly the main character the original main character right uh and it'll disregard the other guys like okay i guess i wasn't planned in this one <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, yeah all right next one uh yep yeah.